Hey guys, welcome to Tiny House Customs. I'm Dan. If you're new to my channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You guys are what drive me to continue doing what I'm doing. So thank you for subscribing. In this video, I will be doing something. I can't remember, but I was doing really good on the intro there and I was like, I'm just gonna go with it. But I screwed up, so now I gotta look at my computer. Now I remember what I'm gonna be doing. In this video, I will be doing the glue up of this project. All these mortise and tenant joints need to be glued together, clamped and all that good stuff. So I'll be doing that. I think. Oh, and I'll also, and then I'll show you how I cleaned out all this stuff too. So let's do it. Okay, thanks. So yeah, we're sitting, not per day. Yeah, it's like the girl you brought home last night. Ruff! This is gonna be the most stressful portion of this whole project. So I'm only gonna film one joint because it's gonna be extremely hard to film it. And I'm really just testing the glue that I'm gonna be using. And even then, it's gonna be hard to explain what I'm doing while I'm doing it. I'm just gonna be doing it quickly because I have approximately 20 to 30 minutes of work time with the epoxy that I'm gonna go with. I'm going with epoxy because unfortunately, these things, things have changed and they're, some of them are looser than others. So but basically, I'm gonna to try to make this joint Perfectly square to this piece, up tight. Go with it, man. You got a nice table. It's levelish, flat, you can say. I'm ready. Epoxy is gonna be stronger in the long run. Uh, it's a little harder to work with. If I take my time, you can't take your time because you gotta go quick. So this is a two-part mixture. It's a 50-50 type stuff. Wow, that smells like straight up bald <laughs> Yes, I'm gonna wear protective equipment. Make sure they're clean, dry, and rough. And hell yeah, they're rough. 50-50, mix it, paint it, paint it, paint it, stick it, clamp it. One to one ratio. Oh my gosh, that is so thick. Oh gosh, I already screwed up. Mix this up. Way too thick. I need thinner stuff. 30 minutes, go. So I'm just gonna apply it very liberally on the inside of the mortise. So I applied epoxy to both sides of every joint. Clean that up. Try to prevent as much squeeze out as I can. Good. And start clamping. That's perfect. A little squeeze out on the back side. Try to get some of that right now. But maybe not. Check this. That does not look good. I mean, that is within reason. Yeah, that's perfect. So I'm gonna let this harden up for about 24 hours. 30, 24 to 36 is what's recommended. Overall, that was a success. We'll see what the cleanup's like too. That might be a pain in the ass. So I gave this joint plenty of time to harden up. I've tested it out kinda. I think it's pretty strong. I hope it's strong. I got a mad I hope it's strong. So once I took the clamps off, I went back with a razor blade and cleaned out the epoxy and I sanded this down and it looks pretty good. And that side looks really good, which is the outside. Looks real nice. These blue pieces of tape that I have on here are just marked so that I know which piece goes where. So, you know, on this one I did A1, A2, A3, and then I did B4, B5, B6. So I got an A side and a B side and then the number. So I have multiple references, so can't screw that up too royally. Ooh, mother Start your stopwatch. Since the uh, cleanup on that last joint wasn't that hard, I'm gonna really fill these things up. If I got a lot of squeeze out, it's not gonna be the end of the world. Oh, I forgot to put gloves on. Two minutes. Four minutes. You should have had a clamp right there ready to go, but you didn't. One good well-placed whack right here. That'll do it. That's perfect. Nine minutes. That's good. And that was 10 minutes. I just broke the clamp. That's what you get for five freaking pennies at Harbor Crap. It's really important at this stage to make sure that the door is sitting reasonably flat. If it has a twist in it like this, this is gonna lock that twist into it. So, oops. So I'm just gonna sight this. I'm gonna use this edge and this edge, and I'm gonna look down it, and I wanna make sure that that point isn't either high or low. It could come up maybe just a hair more. Yeah. 
Ah, that's perfect. So the next time you see this door, it'll be completely glued up. So I finished gluing up the door completely. The last three, I did those in about 20 minutes, and then I clamped it up and I let it sit for almost three or four days. That was just because of work and I didn't have time to get out here and work on the project. And then one problem I had was the epoxy had came and seeped out all these joints, and so I've been going back and cleaning them up. I've got a total of six, 12, 12 of these joints that I have to clean up. Uh, I've got this last one right here, which I'm gonna show you how I do it. So you can see how the epoxy has seeped out. Now, of course, I could have put some tape. Um, I could have probably tried to clean it up. I just noticed that when I did clean it up, it would smudge it out and it ended up making it bigger than the spot that it's actually in. Um, and on that first one I did, I learned how to clean it up pretty easily. So I'm just gonna show you some of the things that I did. Um, I didn't do one joint the same. Every single joint was different. Uh, a lot of it was done with a, a razor blade and I just came in here and scraped it. Now of course I'm that's extremely aggressive on this grain but I'm gonna have to resand all this from 80 down to 320 or whatever. Uh, another tool I used was a hand plane. Now this is not no top-notch hand plane it's very cheap but it definitely gets the job done now I also have this chamfer that I did in there and that epoxy is just caked in there so what I've been doing is using a chisel and doing the same thing definitely don't want to go as aggressive because it'll tear this grain out on this piece here now again, it doesn't have to be perfect. See, you just screwed up right there. There's a good screw up for you. Now once I got the majority of the epoxy gone, I'm gonna go to my orbital sander and hit it with some 80 grit sandpaper. Um, now one thing I didn't go over in my sanding videos is that orbital sanders, I did go over that they're horrible, but when you place an orbital sander on a small piece like this, it's gonna end up rounding the edges like that. So it's very key to always keep as much of that sandpaper on the surface. You wanna give it steady pressure so that it stays flat and you always wanna keep it moving. You don't wanna tip it up on edge. I'll do it, you'll see me do it because as soon as you do it on that up on the edge, it's gonna make a divot in the wood. So both of these chamfers are done on a 45 degree, which equals a 90. Um, but I noticed that I was getting uneven sanding because I was tilting it one way or the other. So what I did was put a small degree on this so I can focus more on each individual side and then I can bring it back from one to the other. So I'm just gonna place it in there and I'm gonna be very careful that I don't roll off the end when I'm sanding, because if I roll off the end, it'll end up putting a, a radius in that. So I want to make sure I just give it steady pressure for the width of the board. I don't want to carry that pressure over and fall off like that. I don't know how it looks on camera, but to me, it looks perfect. There's some minor imperfections, but I'm only at 80 grit. I'm going to sand this thing all the way down to 320. That's basically how I went back and, and removed the epoxy from all the joints. Now, there's still epoxy on the wood from when I was gluing it up. It's on my hands. So I just need to go back and sand those spots, make sure it's good. And also my edge, all my edges need to be flushed up. These aren't perfect. Some of these went in a little bit farther. So this just needs to be smoothed out. The end needs, the um, both sides need to be planed one time. And then I'm just gonna go back and sand it real quick with, uh, I'll probably go 80. I'll go through the series of uh, sanding. 80, 120, one something, 220, and then 320. So I'm not gonna bore you with that at all because I'm done with that. Sanding video sucked. Probably gonna lose some subscribers on that video, but. Yeah, I'm going to unsubscribe, but don't worry, I'll still comment on your videos. You suck! There's some education stuff in there, I guess. No, 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 there was no education there. I'm, I'm now stupider f for being part of this. I'm gonna make the door frame in the next video, so I can actually say that. I actually know what the next video is. But then after that, I'm done. I don't have any more videos filmed. But this is good. This is the end of that video. I think that was 11 or 12 or 13. That was episode, it's gotta be episode 11. I think so. I think it was episode 11. 
cool. What else do I gotta do? I still gotta do Peanuts Christmas Special. Peanuts Christmas Special is on my mind. It's driving me nuts. I'll do a little teaser in this video, but I figured out my finish that I'm gonna be using on the door, and I might, I'm gonna test it out on the cedar shakes that I plan to install, but this might be used on the entire house, except for the PVC trim. But it's an outdoor oil, seals, protects exterior wood. I will need to apply this almost every year. I'll have to go back and give it a light sanding with some 320 maybe, probably even lighter than that. And I'll have to put a fresh coat on every year. But that'll be a weekend project probably, I think, I hope. Probably not. It'll be, it'll be like a month-long project. So you can kind of see what it's going to end up looking like. It's kind of got a little waxy feel to it, which I don't know about that. Now I just did, I literally took this stick and dipped it in there and then I didn't do anything with it. I didn't sand it. I didn't do nothing. So it's only got one coat on it. I'm thinking six coats, six initial coats on the, on the thing, sanding between the coats, buffering and making it smooth will end up producing a nice finish. It doesn't have that crazy gloss finish, but I really like that waxy feel that it has. Yeah, and you also like that plasticky feel because that blobbed all in your bed. You know that that is going to be good for exterior. All right, guys, thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, make sure you go and check out my Patreon account if you want to help support and contribute to my channel. In my next video, I'll be doing something door frame. My next video, I'm going to be starting making my door frame. Now, that's going to be three videos in total. So, stick around for that. Peanut, you already scratched my door. I didn't mean to. It was, I wanted to come inside. Make sure you leave your comments and questions down below, and I'll answer them in a later video. If you really like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would, share this video to your favorite social media. Start spreading the word about this channel. And that's it.